everyone! Welcome back to another 1v1 battle. I am bringing Musleon being led by the Red Duke when we're facing off against the Dwarves. The past couple days, I have been doing tests as the Vampire counts with their uh, Raise Dead spell. It's... Well, we'll get into that here in a moment. So, um, again, we're facing off against the Dwarves. My front line here is going to be mostly Skeletal Warriors, except from the very center we have the Sternsman. We have the Claw of Nagash, three Cryptors, two Puppies, Karen Wraith on the edge, and then the Red Duke. Against the other factions that I've tested this kind of build against, um, I mostly bring the Red Duke on a Flying Mount, just because other factions are typically more mobile. But against the Dwarves, you can kind of save money and just put them on a War Horse. Um, the Dwarf Army here, we have a Gyrocopter with Brimstone Guns, two Rangers in the front, we have a line of Dwarf Warriors backed up by Thorgrim Grudgebearer and a Runesmith, we have two Iron Drakes with Troll Armor Torpedoes, and then the Skulder Guard, Goblobber, Longbeard, and uh, Dragonback Slayer. An a unique build, I've not really seen this one before, I like it, I like when players take a risk and um, be bring just different builds. Um, so over here, but you can see that the Rangers are now going to be out of their stalking mode because they're putting down some fire on our units. I do not want them to focus down on our Cryptors or on our Puppies, so I'm going to be running the Red Duke over here and start to utilize the Raised Dead spell to silence them. So we're going to have a group of zombies being raised up right here. So that's going to hold them in place, allow our units to kind of get into range. Then we're going to go over here, and I believe I cast another... I should think I cast a spell over here next to shut the Skulder Guard. Yep. I'm taking damage, but the thing is, the vampire counts are pretty good at healing that up, especially vampires. Like the actual vampire units. Gonna get into these rangers, try and slow them down for the rest of our units to get there. There is another raised dead on this other iron drake over here. The puppies are being ripped around the flanks because I know I need to shut down these iron drake's torpedoes as soon as possible. These can rays are also gonna be trying to get into those as well. Cryptora, Skeletal Lion, Sternsman, and Claw Nagash are just going to kind of plow into the front of the Dwarven Lions, but you can see I am now going to whip the Red Duke around, and we're going to cast some more raised dead spells. Uh, Puppy's going to get into these Iron Drakes really briefly, but we are going to try and run away from the Dragonback Slayers. So now I'm going to use the Raised Dead spell to hold the Dragonback Slayers in place so that the Puppies are going to be able to leave. There's an invocation of the Heck being shot down on most of my line, so we have some regeneration going on there. Can race flanked around the side, so they're getting into these Iron Drake torpedoes, which is not what they, uh, where they want to be. Thorgrim's trying to hold up the middle with his buffs and just being Thorgrim. Uh, so you can see we are going to run away from the Dragonback Slayers, and I have taken a lot of miscast damage, which is, is another drawback of the Raised Dead spell, but again, the Vampire Counts are really good at just bringing health back. So we were doing our best to try and slow down the Dragonback Slayers, and, and obviously they want to follow our own puppies, but the thing is, enough models are being caught back here that eventually they're just going to be like, well, we're just going to engage these zombies and skeletons back here, so freeing up my units to go, and I think we're going to do like a rear charge. Actually, we're going to go and try and finish up these Iron Drake Torpedoes. Meanwhile, the Claw and the Gash, Sternsman, and Cryptor are holding up the center of the line. We were destroying the Dwarf Warriors slowly, uh, but surely we got into the Skulder Guard still, even though they destroyed our um, Skeletal Warriors that were summoned on them. They still were able to hold the Skulder Guard in place long enough for the rest of my army to plow through the front line. Another invocation of a Hanek going on our puppies, Karen Race, and the Red Duke, who has been targeted this entire time by the Gyrocopters with Brimstone Guns. They've done a lot of damage to him, but you can see just the amount of disruption that the Raised Dead spell. I shut down two of their Iron Drakes. I shut down the Rangers with the Raised Dead spell. I kept the Dragonback Slayers from getting into our puppies with the Raised Dead spell, and I just did it again by summoning another unit in their way. And the rest of my army, the Cryptors and Skeletons, are not supposed to be able to beat Dwarven Warriors, but when they're backed up by Cryptors who can't be targeted down by the ranged damage of your enemy player, they can do a lot of damage. Same thing with the Puppies. The Puppies and the Cryptors' greatest weaknesses are going to be like Rangers or those Iron Drake Torpedoes, but when you have seven fucking raised dead spells to just spam out there, and you can see how easy it was. I just run around. I haven't even engaged in combat with the Red Duke because he doesn't need to. He doesn't need to at all. The only reason I bring him and not like a necromancer is because he's just a little bit more sturdier than a necromancer is, in case he does get caught. I have miscast like four four times, I think, but I've just been doing invocation to heck. You can see we are almost reached our maximum regeneration uh, limit, but that's fine. He has now cast all of his skeletal spells, and the skeleton and zombies were able to shut down the Skulder Guard, uh, all three of them and the rangers, long enough for my front line to plow through the Dwarven Warriors and then kind of just collapse in when the um, summon skeletons were finally dead, but it was by that time it's too late. So you see a lot of the dwarves at this point have routed. Um, we have destroyed Thorgrim Grudgebearer with the puppies over here. I assigned them to do that. And then um, Dragonback Slayers. There's the only thing remaining. Now in this battle, this was pretty much one-sided. But the thing is, this player was actually the most resilient of the ones that I have done in my recent test against um, Bretonia. I tested against Empire, Wood Elves. I did not test against another Vampire Count yet. Um, and I don't think I played against Chaos yet. But out of the, all the battles I've pl played, um, the other ones got, like, no disrespect to them. This is just a hard thing to counter. 
but they, they did get crushed, like, pretty damn hard. Um, like I said, I used Musilion's Red Duke on a Hellsteed against the Empire. I faced off against Griffins and Flying Captains, but I was able to use our, um, I think it's called Foe Seeker, to outspeed them. And I was basically just running or flying over their um, back line, which had cannons and crossbowmen, and I was just summoning raised dead behind them. Front line crashed into the front line of swordsmen and great swords, but we were able to crush them. Uh, basically the same exact thing with the Bretonia, and then the Wood Elf player, honestly, they just bought a, brought a bad build and got crushed pretty hard. But the point is, I was trying this build against different players and different factions in hopes that one of them would actually be able to counter the raised dead silliness that I think it is. The Raised Dead spell, the way it works right now, initially I thought it was just very strong. I still hesitate to say it's overpowered because you there you can beat it. The problem is you need to make the right build to beat it. Um, if you fight against a Vampire Count right now, most of them are probably going to be bringing Raised Dead. The Vampire Counts that I fought against have brought Raised Dead. It's very annoying to deal with. So it's kind of hard to bring any ranged unit or any unit that you need to continually fire like artillery against them because they're just going to shut you down with a raised dead. So you really need to bring a, um, a melee focused build, like a hardcore melee focused build. That's not going to be shut down by a bunch of skeleton summons. And I'll try and show a video of that at some time in the future when I face off against a vampire count player who does raise dead. And hopefully I can show you that you can counter it if I can win. Like it's still, it's still a difficult battle just because of how many units they can put on the field and, you know, do rear charges um, tire out your forces, things like that. Um, so yeah, out of the, all of the battles I recently recorded, this was the one that actually held up the most, which is why I'm going to show this one. And after this battle, I don't think I'm ever going to bring the raised dead spell again. In this current state, I think it is just too easy to not even abuse, but just to use and use effect effectively. The skeletons themselves, the summons or even zombies, if you just summon zombies, so you don't um, risk the overcast damage, they're, um, the point of them is not to kill the units that you summon them on. The point of them is just to shut down their ranged capabilities. So these Iron Drake Hammer tor Torpedoes, if I was not able to summon skeletons into them, they would have wrecked my Vargles. In fact, I think they got a Salvo off and I like, brought one almost down to half health and one Salvo. Like, so the strength of the summons isn't the damage. It's just the disruption. It's too good. It's too cheap, I think. Way too cheap of a spell. And the drawbacks of overcasting for skeletons is nearly negated with the vampire counts because they're so easy to heal themselves back up. It's not even a really thing you have to worry too much about. The Red Duke, who's an excellent melee combatant, you can saw there, I didn't even need to use him. I didn't even need to use him. You could also bring a Necromancer if you want to be cheaper on your um, lore choices, but they are a little bit more, more brittle if you get caught with them. But yeah, I think it's a very silly spell. A very, very silly spell. So after these series of tests and winning them, I'm not saying... There's not a player out there who can counter it. I'm sure there is. I just haven't come across them in my little tests, but it's. I think it's just too strong. I think it's way too strong for what it is. Um, but good game to Shiggy. Again, he, this player held out longer um, and dealt more damage to me than any of the other uh, factions, which is why I'm showing this one off. Um, so let's do a cinematic view, I guess, of this spell. It's insane. They're going to deal a lot of damage to my call on the gash initially, too which is really good. And uh, don't take this video as me basically saying like, oh, look how I wreck these players. That's not, that's not the message here, just in case you think it is. I'm not showing this because I won. I'm just showing this because I think Race Dead is, is way too good. And um, hopefully, I don't know. I'm hoping CA changes the spell. Not too crazy, but either make it more expensive or just lower the amount of charges you have. And I think it will be fine. More than two, which was what it was at initially let's say like four or five casts instead of seven and then raise the um mana cast from like four and five instead of two and three and then i think you're gonna be good because the power the disruption ability of just summoning so many is like this is just way too much it's way too much it's so easy to shut down any ranged unit in this game it's even worse when you have this guy on a Hellsteed. Because Hellsteed's fast enough to outrun most units, except for, or, uh, except for what else. Technically, their eagles are faster. Oh, 
I got the skeletons in the back. You may be thinking, you know, like, this is not the best build that the dwarf player could have brought. But again, it could have been pretty effective. All he had to do was hold up my forces very briefly, um, if I didn't have the summons, and he could have easily focused down my puppies really fast. Because the rangers, if they were not disrupted on my initial approach, um, and held in place for as long as they were, they could have been pulled back on the dwarf line. They had the great warriors over here, they had the dragonback slayers over there. It is possible that they could have held off my front line long enough and all they need is like two salvos of Iron Drakes firing at one barbell, and they probably would have crumbled. Like, no joke. The Iron Drake torpedoes do a lot of damage, um, along with the Skolder Guard. So it's possible this build could have won if I didn't have the Red Duke running around just dropping skeletons everywhere. Now, if this player brought just like a melee focus build, like just a bunch of dwarf warriors, you know, crumbling guard, like a very offensive, no cannons, no range units whatsoever. They may have, they probably would have won. Well, maybe. Bargos is still hard to deal with in melee, but if they could keep their Dragonback Slayers alive long enough to take care of them, then maybe. Look at these puppies. You're gonna roll around with the Red Duke now, buddies. And then they're gonna go off to fight Thor and Grudge Bear here soon. I had to keep on the move. Um, the player was doing a good job. At, well, I guess all they did was just right click their Brimstone guns on my Red Duke. But it forced me to continually move to try and dodge any shots that I could, because man, he was really close to death. Logan doing what he can, but most of his Dwarf Warriors have been crushed this time. Because they didn't have the support of the back line, which is what they were relying on. And there come the buckets. Man, oh man, do the puppies love eating up some dwarves. I believe I summoned these Skelter Warriors because um, some Dwarf Warriors were trying to get into the Red Duke, so I had to stop them. Now throw him into the Dragonback Slayers. So yeah, good game to my opponent. It's an annoying build to fight against. So again, probably not going to be bringing Ray's Dead anymore. Maybe I will with like Heinrich Kimmler, because he may need the support because he's not that amazing. Um, and also he's not mobile enough to really properly utilize the effect of, you know, going into the enemy's backline and dropping skeletons. It'll be much harder for him to do it. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the battle. Uh, again, I will try to get a battle done against vampire accounts who bring Ray's Dead, because a lot of them are doing it these days, so it's probably not going to be that hard to, to find a match. Um and see if I can beat them with the more melee focused build. We'll see. It's, it's a tough spell. Has its weaknesses, but much more strengths than weaknesses, I think. Uh, but again, hope you enjoyed, everybody. I will see you all in the next episode. And uh, feel free to leave your suggestions on the raised dead, or uh, your comments on what you think about the raised dead spell, what um, armies you would bring to counter it, or if you've already countered it in multiplayer, let me know what armies you used and how effective they were. I'm eager to know. Thanks again for watching.